Uh, let's speak uh, to Michael Gaffney. He spent a year with Muhammad Ali as his personal photographer from 1977 to 78. Uh, we saw him briefly in another report, actually. Uh, thank you for joining us. I think some of your pictures uh, are in the gallery in Chelsea, the Proud Gallery. I'm not sure if they include Muhammad Ali as well. well what was he like to, to spend a year on the road with? Well, it was probably the most extraordinary experience of my lifetime. Uh, I'm a documentary photographer, and I got this rare privilege to spend uh, an entire year uh, with probably probably one of the most extraordinary people uh, of our lifetime. And um, I covered three fights, uh, traveled around the world with, uh, with Muhammad, uh, made 8,000 photographs, and um, it truly was uh, the experience of a lifetime. And, and were, well, you, I, um, were you with him the whole, the whole time? So for the preparations for the fight, the training, the downtime? Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, I was with him day and night. We lived together. I lived in, uh, in Deer Lake, Pennsylvania at his camp. Uh, at that time, he was living, he had a house in Chicago. I lived there. But most of the time, uh, we were on the road. We, we flew all over the world, um, and he was very much involved with uh, promotions. Uh, so there was a lot of activity all over. So, yeah, I, I traveled with him, got to know him very well. Um, how, how, much, fact, how much of the showmanship was a, was a pub, public mask? I mean, what was he like beh behind that, behind all the, the lip from Louisville? Well, you know what? That's an excellent question because that was one of the reasons why I did I, I did my book because I wanted to to reveal a side of Ali that most people didn't know about. You know, people always ask me, "Who? What is the real Ali like? What's he like?" And I got to know, and when I found out, I said, "This is a book I have to do." And eventually, after many years, it took me two years to do it, but I released it. Uh, Two, uh, two years ago, and it's called The Champ, My Year with Muhammad Ali. And in the book, it, it really is a revelation about the inside of uh, Ali, the, the side that most people don't know. It, it's fascinating, uh, but it, it also explained to me how this, uh, the most popular, most recognized person in the world, what was he like in private? And that's what I found out. And uh, what, what I found what, what was, was a he remarkable, like? spiritual, holy man. This is a deeply religious person, uh, and that's where he gathers his strength. Uh, and that's where he obviously gathered his strength in the ring. And, and after the ring, when he suffered through the 32 years of Parkinson's, um, you know, it really was his great faith. He's a devout Muslim, prays five times a day. And those were the things I found out about him. But in private, what really is it known is he was he was a very quiet person, and it was almost like the light switch went off when he was out, uh, out in public or out in front of the TV cameras, and he was so good at it. I mean, there was no better promoter for the game of boxing, which, if you remember, the game of boxing was kind of dying at the time when Ali came in, and all of a sudden, it, it became uh, the number one uh, sport uh, in, in the world as far as interest in in the heavyweight game, and you know, uh, we were we were blessed to have some great fighters. The 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 British had Henry Cooper, uh, great fighter, uh, and in in America there were so many. It was really the golden age. George Foreman and Joe Frazier and Kenny Norton and, and Ali, and they fought each other all the time. Uh, Ali uh, was a courageous fighter, a formidable fighter, who feared no one. And he fought everybody, including the, the first fight that I covered with him was Ernie Shavers. Ernie Shavers was a, was a fighter that he was advised not to fight. But Ali took him on like he took on every other challenge. And he did manage to beat him, even though Sh uh, Shavers hurt him very, very badly in the second round and almost knocked him out. Yeah, Michael, we're just, we're, we're, back, we're, Michael we're, sorry, we're running out of time. But just briefly, I mean, if, can you just encapsulate, you know, uh, the spirit of him? Did he hate boxing as much as he loved it when you think what boxing 
did to him in terms of the damage and everything. Was there, was there that sort of almost split personality? Or, 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 or tell me a story which, was, if, if you can, encapsulates maybe that dilemma that he might have felt. Okay, I, 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 the, thing with, the thing is, when Ali continued to box after I left and, and really was, shouldn't have been boxing, but he couldn't stop himself, okay? The reason he couldn't stop himself was because he loved boxing. He loved to box. And, and it, it's probably some of the damage that was caused in the ring. Uh, that, But it, he, he loved to box. He wanted to be in the gym. In fact, one of the things that he said to Angelo Dundee uh, when he was in a wheelchair at the Muhammad Ali Center, he leaned over to him and he said, what I miss most is going to the gym. And and shortly after that, of course, he lost. We lost Angelo Dundee. But no, I, he 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 loved to box, but he also took it as a, a big responsibility uh, to to be a leader uh, for for people to give people hope. And I think that's the other side of him that uh, is the genuine, authentic part of him. That uh, I, I think people who know him and really understand him. That's why they love him so much. Michael Gaffney, thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, here on BBC News. Thank you very much.